Hey guys, Dan Frigolette here from Sexy People Podcast, formerly Porn Stars Are People. I wanted to apologize personally for the period of time where we haven't put out episodes. It's been a long, hard year post-pandemic, and I've had a lot of health issues, to be honest. And that has caused the period of time where we didn't give you any content. Thank you for staying with us. I promise we will not allow this behavior to continue. New episodes start now. Sexy People Podcast. I'm Dan Frigolat. I'm here with uh, Reese Rideout. Thank you for uh, joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Really you look it. fantastic. Your setup is great. You're, I like this one ear in, one ear out. It feels like you're flying a plane. <laughs> <laughs> you got a whole thing. You got. You look like you look like a. Uh, you really do. You look like a um like a captain of something right now with that shirt and that whole and all the confidence. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the wife picked it out. I was like, I need something. Can you please iron it? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. That's what I need in my life. I, so I'm in a weird position in my life where, in my head, I need like. I need I need like like fifty fifty like financial, uh, partnership. But then I, I started dating somebody recently who just wants to, like, cook clean and, like, please me sexually. And I'm like, that's all so fun. Like, I kind of, like, like it's, it's wrong and it doesn't feel equal. But at the same time, I'm like, this is why my grandfather was always happy. Yeah. There, yeah, that's nice. Some primal, the primal things that yeah. you need. But you, a CPA would be good, too. It's CPA terrible. that also does sex. <laughs> right. A CPA <laughs> that does sex. I feel like that's someone's <laughs> OnlyFans bio. <laughs> so, so how are you where are you on earth um up by portland oregon i'm actually salem like an oh, hour shit. south i have a weird question about salem um someone told me this once when i when i performed there i was told that um if you go to prison in oregon you have to live in salem for either a period of time or forever is that a real thing have you heard this no uh-uh I just imagine that when people tell me things like that late at night at a bar, that they're just making up stuff. Yeah, I mean, there is the there is a prison over there off of, you know, Cordon Road. But uh, yeah, first time kind of hearing that. Yeah. Well, uh, did you grow up in Oregon? Actually, that's why I'm in Salem. Oh, because uh, because you grew up in you, did you grew up in Salem all time? Oh, because of the because of the prison thing. <laughs> My whole life, I've been here. I have to be here. I'm sorry, I killed three people. Uh, yeah. All right, well, that's cool. So, um, so Salem, Oregon, what's the vibe there? You think, um, from like a, a, a sex positivity perspective, does it feel like a place that's on the, like, cause everybody thinks Portland is one of the, the, the like sex positive places right now, especially on the West coast. De yeah, definitely Portland. I think Salem still has that very like small town feel to it. Yeah. Um, I don't go out much here, but but in Portland, you know, I, I dance at clubs and I've I've seen some some of the sex clubs up there and yeah, that's very positive. Yeah, the, here, so there's there's like a there's like a healthy um, strip club scene, but I only really know from the like men trying to go see women. Is it the same for dudes stripping in in Portland? The same like that's like one of the strip club capitals of the world. I actually, I strip at uh, Darcell's. It's like yeah. this drag bar. You, you know that one? No, 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 not, not off oh. but Yeah, it's been like open like 52 years. She's the oldest working drag queen in the world. Is that Guinness right? Book a world record, yeah. Is that right? I, I got to go tonight. Um, we So it's it's like bachelorette parties where, yeah. where I dance. So that's, it's a lot of fun. Doing what do they there. call that? Do they, um, they, they have, they have all the words. Is it called, the, it's, uh, it's not called the, re why is it called male review? when it's dudes why does it like why is it more respectful for if you're dancing for women and stripping why is that a thing oh uh, yeah well it's I like think dudes, maybe it's like gentlemen's club and then like male review just yeah. different language we use yeah they try and make it sound classy yeah but, and it is it's I, classier when it's women um although uh, all everyone i know in comedy has a joke about how when women go to the strip club it's all just like dicks on the face and then men go to female strippers and we're like, we can't touch anybody. There's no, there's no touching. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but you're picking people up and like, and like, um, like mime 69ing them. Like, I don't know. What's the, <laughs> what's like the yeah. classic move? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, the, <laughs> you, you know, there's this little move where you can flip them around on the ground. You like lock your legs in like some 
Brazilian jiu-jitsu move yeah. and flip them back over. And <laughs> Who would have known you had to, like, have, like, UFC skills to uh, to strip? I like that. Is it called yeah. stripping? Do I feel like an old, like like a, like a, like a, like a 1920s man when I call it stripping? Yeah, stripping, um, entertainment, male entertainment. Dance. Yeah, that sounds better. Yeah, um, I'm fu- I'm fine with whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so your explain your explain your 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 career to us, especially the way things have changed over the last four years, especially. What what is like? What is your day to day, and where are you making money in this industry as a sex positive person? Yeah, so it's um, I got in like the early two thousands, and that was like. Um, isn't this just a quick rundown of how things kind of changed it went magazines to to video and then that when it was video i was in at the peak of like the websites so vhs had been gone then after that it kind of came into like live live camming but i wasn't so into that i just didn't like to you know dance monkey ding interesting (laughs) yeah just because i went from you know, working once a month with uh, randyblue.com um, to to waking up every morning and seeing a camera sit at the end of my bed. It's yeah. just different. And now now it's with the OnlyFans where um, everybody has, the creators have their own control of their content and they it's up to them to make as much as they want, which is cool. But yeah. well, you have so, to be business-like. Yeah, so what I've noticed is the industry sort of changed in a way, even since I've been doing these interviews where it's like the people that were the most successful were like, I don't want to say party people, but like they're people that are like social and able to like play the game and do the politics and be fun to be around and like shoot the shit. And then it's sort of like slowly started moving to like people that like can figure out the algorithm and can just work hard from home, do like a nine to five organized thing or whatever the hours are, you know, and then just be about their business and be about their money and not have to play the weird game where you have to hang out and drink and do all that sort of thing. And so that real time thing is happening, I think, right now in our industry. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, like data rules the world, right? So if you can if you can crunch the numbers and know how to manipulate them or or fit within that AI, it's going to help you out. Well, let's talk about that. How what is what what metrics do you have uh, uh, at your disposal? How do you process those, and then and then how do you decide? Because there's there's some element of like dance monkey dance. It's like okay, well like people want to see this content, and like your ego is like screw that, I'll do what I want to do. But then the other part is like, but if I do what I want to do, it might not make any money. So how do you make those decisions? How do you feel like they're your decisions that you're making, and it's not like the market doing it for you? And yeah, and, and, and what are all the, the things that you have at your disposal to, to make those decisions? Yeah, well, we're kind of playing by the rules of all these platforms like the Instagram and TikTok. I, I feel as if I had my you know choice, I would just make the craziest shit, but it always gets pulled. Yeah. <laughs> and, and being in the gay side too, predominantly, I, I just have like a target on my back. Like I can't get away with shit. You know, there's... People on TikTok, for example, Jacobs, who has 10 million followers, he can show his dong where you see veins through his sweats. Like I, right. I, I was doing similar things as him because I'm like, I'm just going to you know, duplicate some of his stuff. I get pulled. I get flagged. Um, it is. It's, it, there's a weird hypocrisy. This is a weird hypocrisy because I see it a lot where it's like, if you don't have the 10 million, if you don't have the thing, so like at some point, TikTok or whoever goes, oh, they're making us money. They're keeping people on the platform. So just let them rock, you know? Um, and then it's like, if you have, if you're like trying to build a following, everything is up for debate and everything is up for flag and everything is up for like cancellation. And so yeah. it, it's hard to feel like the, the rules are the same for everybody when that kind of stuff happens. Yes, it's different, you know, and he's and he's verified, but yeah, they're they let it slide. But that I the him being on the straight side and doing solo stuff, yeah, is is more acceptable to them. But if you pop on screen with a another dude, a little too close, yeah, you know, is that really is it? What's the most ridiculous thing where you were like, 
hundred percent like there's no way this is getting pulled and then it got pulled. What's the most ridiculous thing you've experienced? You know, um, years ago, a friend of mine that was working with Randy Blue, Chip Tanner and I, we did this dancing for equality because okay. women on YouTube could get away with so much. Sure. I mean, I mean, the camel toe, right? Yeah. We show a little bulge and it's gone. Is that right? Oh, yeah. So what, what he did was he took an, a video of these two chicks like twerking. Yeah. And we duplicated move for move and threw them up in the upper upper corner to show we're doing exactly what they're doing youtube yeah <laughs> so they couldn't pull it because uh, every time we'd put something up it'd get pulled um i did this one who remember the hula hoop chick that went crazy years ago we who defi define she went crazy like she trended or she like lost yeah. her mind <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> trended yeah okay. yeah um the Wii Hula Hoop, remember that ac activity physical um, Nintendo sure. game? Yeah, 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 yeah. Went 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 uh, really big on the views, like millions of views. And yeah. I did something similar, but I took it over the top. Like I pulled nunchucks out of my underwear. Yeah. Cry, and I'm and and doing the hula hoop at the same time, and mine got pulled within a week. You know, I got like a million in seven days. Did it give you a like week. a reason? No. No. This is what I find very interesting, and and, and this week especially, uh, a bunch of people that I follow and people that I'm trying to follow um, and and build relationships with have gotten their uh, their accounts pulled, and some of them are brand new, some of them are have been around for a long time, and I just see it more and more um, where people are getting their accounts pulled. And originally, I remember even with with Facebook, is they would give you, even if they were ridiculous, they would give you like an explanation of what's happened. Um, and you could argue it all you want because they're not going to change it. But eventually, they just now, they'll delete you, and then there's n there's no conversation anymore. It's just we've pulled it, and that's that stands. So people that will have like a million followers, and then they have to start over. I mean, people's people's whole accounts are called like, so, like, like you know, it'll be like Kelsey got deleted or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like when they remake <laughs> their accounts. It's like it's crazy, like we're like giving them we're addicted more and more to this thing because it's a thing that we can like make money on and we can get our, our art out there but we're like we're held accountable to a group of people that aren't holding themselves accountable like instagram or facebook or whoever and so more and more we're just like you it'll pull it off and you're like why and it's like well you got flagged and if you get flagged again uh we'll we'll uh we'll take your whole account away it's like it feels like being a child and you're like getting hit by your parents. and You're like, why? And they're like, I don't know, because I don't know how to express my emotions. I guess what the whole thing feels like. You're like, I don't even yeah. want to put anything on, on, on YouTube. I'm going to I'm going to get canceled. Yeah, it plays. It plays with my emotions so much, so much. Know? It's like it brings you to the brink of suicide because because you're on shadow ban. Right. You're <laughs> like, you, you, like, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do for my industry. And there's what other way can I do this? It's crazy. Yeah. Do you get into the game? I mean, so you're doing the comparison thing. It's just hard. I, I have a hard time with this, too. I'll, like, look at what other people are putting up in comedy, and I'll be like, my stuff's the same, you know? Um, do you get do you get sucked into this comparison thing where you're like, well, you know, they're able to put this stuff up. Do I emulate that? Do I try to make a new r route? Like, what's the what's your thought process for that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, I, I do compare. I'll, I do like doing original I, I use things um, as you know inspiration, but sometimes I'll duplicate exactly just to see, and yeah. then I then it still gets it still can get pulled. Yeah, like so, I said, I got a target. <laughs> so what's the okay? So explain the target. So you you are your straight man who does uh, boy boy content. Is that how you identify? Yeah, you know, o over the years I, I always dance around that. Yeah, around it like. Um, are, are you straight? No. Are you gay? No. Yeah. What are you? Uh, ah, yeah. just sexual. But see, right. I can, if, if I come out and just say one thing, I'm, I, I'll, I'll actually lose money. Sure. I'll, I'll sure. Look. Okay. So that's fair. And I think, and I think we're bet. I, and, and, you know, that's why I wanted to um, get your perspective on it too, because I don't want to label you. I think we do that a lot. I think it's a lot of people being like, Oh, they're trying to understand. And this having to label everybody, uh, the problem that I'm having lately is like we're just keep creating more labels when what we should be doing is labeling less. And we're like, no, 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 there's a thousand labels now, which like maybe is progress, right? Because then we're like, oh, well, you know, rather than ask everybody what their pronouns are and this and that, you know, we'll just eventually be like, uh, you're you and I'm me and that's fine. And it's not my business, maybe. 
Um, but instead, we're doing, we're like making it, we're like green, blue, uh, green, blue, orange, purple. And it, it is <laughs> making it a little bit less fun and more confusing almost. Uh, maybe it's progress. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe. Um, maybe we should just have like a, everybody has a key. And you just walk up to each other and try and stick it in. Is it? No, it <laughs> didn't. It didn't match. <laughs> That's a show. There's a show called the, There's a show called Lock and Key, and they're like putting keys in people's heads. Um, oh. But um, okay, so but is it? I mean, it's fair to say that you make boy boy content. Yeah. So yeah, bo boy boy. Um, I mean, I wish I could be completely honest with you and tell you my exact feelings of going to set, being on set, etc. Yeah. yeah. But I, I just wouldn't be. I don't think I'd be accepted for being that open. I, you know, sure. I'd like to. All right. But and I'm trying. I'm trying to get into more. I just did my first buy scene actually out in Arizona, um, day before yesterday. Yeah. I want to get into more on the straight side, but the straight side's homophobic, and since it's so strange. Well, no here's homophobic. the thing, and I, I'll be brief because it it literally like is controversial. There, what I've noticed as an outsider is that there are different testing parameters for straight side and gay side. And so what that's created is, um, is a fear that if you're a crossover, that you might not be able to get as much work working on both sides. And uh, for better or for worse. Well, definitely for worse. Um, and so with that comes some weird ideas that may or may not be homophobic, but what they're doing is, is because the two sides are being treated differently, it creates a, a friction, and that friction is making it so that working straight side is just not not easier. But it comes with certain expectations, whereas working um, gay side or crossover side has different expectations, which I find um, confusing and conflicting, and I don't know why they're different. All right, moving on. Right, we know that you are married. This is a thing that you that you're open about. You're married yeah. to a woman. You have kids. Uh, no kids. No kids. No, we're trying. You know, uh, probably gonna have to do IVF here. Um, is that right? Years out. Yeah. What's um? What do you have any um thoughts, hesitations about that kind of stuff? Do you feel like that's just part of where we are uh, in, in society now? That that's like a thing that we're all doing. Oh, you, you mean the IVF or yeah. just the kids yeah. in general? The what? Uh, no, not the kids. In, in, no, the kids, the kids in, in general. That's obviously like a choice. Yeah, but yeah. it seems like it seems like medically IVF is becoming um, safer, more controlled opportunity for people, right? It does seem like it's yeah happening more often, and maybe that's a chemical imbalance in uh, the pollution or or whatever people are eating or stresses or who knows what it is exactly yeah four years of a particular administration who knows what it could yeah. be yeah yeah <laughs> i mean because you know i have good loads there's <laughs> <laughs> right there's got to be something in them <laughs> i i have a microscope i have, <laughs> I, I, I i've checked it i've checked you, is that it. a thing i i even did a video the fans love it is that <laughs> a thing is it really like uh, uh like sperm count videos i didn't know that was a thing well i made it a thing no i didn't I know like either. that that's fun because well, when I back in back in like um, high school when I was wrestling, I I checked my sperm under a microscope, just twelve hundred X, and I could see it. Yeah, and I remember just t just it was so cool telling fun. all the guys on the team. Yeah, um, but I checked it recently just because I take so many supplements just to make sure. I bought a new microscope and yeah, and I recorded it and threw it up on the big screen. Oh, and you just see him just squirming everywhere. Yeah, do people find that like um, do people find that like sensual? Is that, is that going to become, are you creating like a, um, a fetish? I, I have one guy that keeps hitting me up. He wants to, he wants to jack off in a cup together and then view, view our sperm. Watch them fight to yeah. the death. <laughs> <laughs> that could be fun. But how are you going to know, how are you going to know who's or who's? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you could tell the difference. No, you're going to have to like, you're going to have to like, somebody's going to have to like drink dye or something crazy. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah shake it up <laughs> the reds versus the blues yeah that's that seems fun um and and i'll like leave them in like the um the little glass sheet you know that yeah. goes in the microscope i'll leave it overnight and some of them are still um slide yeah some kind of wait slide. how long before they die it, it can be over 24 hours oh shit yeah 
this is uh, this is interesting, and I'm feeling vulnerable because I want to talk about my thing. Because I because I I'm like grossed out by my own stuff, and I've said this before on uh, somewhere on stage somewhere. Um, so I don't want my own stuff really touching me that much. I don't just like spray it on myself. Um, and so one of my one of my ca- my my catch systems is to just like shoot into something, and then I have it, and then so sometimes it doesn't get disposed of. And it, it's interesting because I wonder how long they're 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 in there fighting and uh, uh, and not because eventually they're eating through the bottom of the cup is what I'm, is what happens. <laughs> but at some point, I wonder, I wonder, yeah, I wonder if if there's a survivor uh, thing in there. And like maybe that maybe that's like the future fertility. You leave them out for 24 hours, and whoever's left that was the strongest one. Just throw him into the mix. Yeah, okay. yeah, <clears throat> definitely. That's so funny. So wait, so your microscope. Allows you to, um, it's 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 like digital. You, it allows you to 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 just throw it onto a screen or whatever. Yeah. How fun! How did you come up with this? As like a as like a FET idea. Why did you do this? Because um, of the high school thing. Well, that that gave that gave me the knowledge to know I could look at it. Yeah. And that microscope's long gone, but I was literally just getting it to see how my sperm was doing because of so many supplements i want yeah. to make sure they were still active because the fertility thing yeah and did when you I think threw, you were just gonna up on the did you think you were gonna throw a load and it was just gonna be dead sperm like that was that a thought uh, process i have yeah really um i yeah i have i have came so i have i have to like where, where the everything's dead the sperm are just really? like fuck where are they at i can't find them no shit so i have to pop off of supplements and do some more healthy things, you know, that help yeah. the the Leydig cells, Sertoli cells inside the testicles to produce more with luteinizing hormones, things like that. And they're they're good now. Yeah, they're good now. No shit. But yeah, it just it just went up on the screen, and then I was like, oh, these sperm look so beautiful. They're just everywhere, yeah. millions of them. Yeah, let me show them off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so who is the who is the? Um, can we go this far? Who is the majority of your fan base? um men yeah 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 um yeah yeah definitely it's like 90 plus percent men i mean over the years i randy blue would say that they had a lot of um uh, lesbians that liked gay porn yeah um and i never knew straight women bought porn until i can like see some people's only fans pages i've become like members of just to kind of go in and see what they're doing on selling yeah. techniques and like Jacobs, the guy I mentioned before, just has so many women, like 90% women. No kidding. So it's crazy. You, you, There's another market which just, but I got to figure out how to split them. It's like, come to my website. What do you like? Yeah. <laughs> do you like, do you like dick and dick or dick and yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or right. Or right. Or all solo. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I find, and then this is based on no, uh, um, algorithmic information just from being out here in these streets i find that women either and then from this podcast i find that women either don't identify with porn the word porn um the content that's generally being created um or maybe they just won't admit it um but dudes we're not we've like decided that we're not shy about it and so straight dudes gay dudes like we're dudes we're we're holding up porn we're we're spending all the money we're the best at buying porn, dudes are. Um, and I'm glad that dudes are buying porn again. Because there was that weird little period of time where everybody thought porn was free. And we're having like these arguments. Mm. Uh, so I always like to throw the, the, the please pay for your porn into the thing. If you are if you, if you have a favorite performer, keep them in the business. Uh, pay for their porn. Um, where were you in the seat of all of the OnlyFans cancellation crisis? I'm going to label it that. I don't know if anybody else has. Just, yeah. So- like what, last... Uh, August September, they tried. Yeah, to, they tried to uh, minimize the type of content that was allowed on their site. What happened to you? Where were you at emotionally with that whole thing? That, that was very scary because OnlyFans at the moment for me is the majority of of my income. Yeah. Um. So it was a scramble of where am I going to put it? Uh, just for fans isn't as active. Um. I was working with a company, a management company, and they said they had some websites that were they could transfer everything over to. But luckily, you know, that didn't happen, although there is still word that um, OnlyFans is supposed to do an IPO, you know, yeah. um, a, 
public offer with their stock or some shit like that. Yeah. And at that point, they may they may split it off and yeah. make a separate website. Well, the problem that we have is that um, federally, um, we're still like prehistoric about our views about sex and sex work. And so every time they re up and try to make money or, or figure out how to monetize their platform other than using their, their users for, um, like rips and commissions, right? Like whatever fees they're taking when they try to figure out making other money, then they keep bumping into this puritanical, like sex work is bad thing. Um, so OnlyFans, as a as a leader in this place, and they're making millions off of everyone. They should, um, they should be the one to take a stand. Like they really should be the one to stand up for this thing and 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 get rules changed. Um, yeah, that's my perspective. You don't have to attach to that. Yeah, no, you can't. You can't take a, a cut from everybody. Buy a private island, you know, multiple homes, and then all of a sudden just push everybody under the rug. Yeah. Yeah, that's not fair. Just right. Just because just because and it's like it, it's just so funny. Uh, and it happens with all this money stuff like like they spent how many years trying to um, diminish Bitcoin. And then eventually they were like, we have to like like Chase Bank started like a fund predicting against Bitcoin. It's like because they figured out how to make money on it. So it's like this kind of thing. It's like who what kind of people are going to buy OnlyFans stock and then like shit on sex work. It's like it's this weird so again, it's all these little bait. We're taking the babyest steps towards progress. It's frustrating to see that these steps could be leaps and they're just like crawls. I, I've been having trouble with um, payments recently with, I'm, I'm working on this um, Stripogram, this app yeah. called Stripogram. Okay. And I can, I can accept payments. Yeah. But, and I got the idea off of Cameo. Um, just in just when COVID came around, I started yeah. stripping on Cameo, doing stripping Santa. What happens if you do that? Does Cameo pull it? No, I I, I make sure I wear um, um a little bulge cover so yeah. I don't show any dick print. But it, it's great. Every like November, December, I just a, a few thousand. I strip a Santa and tell people right. whether they're naughty or nice. It's fucking cool. Yeah. But but that gave me an idea to do stripogram because you couldn't in public strip as right. a stripper. But I'm having trouble being able to pay people like uh, Stripe won't allow adult stuff because they're because they're attaching it to to sex work. Yeah. 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 But I'm parlaying it. I'm I'm pivoting it at the moment. I'm now singogram, so you can get a singing telegram sure. from any one of your you know favorite artists, yeah. celebrities, etc. That's fun. That's yeah. great. Yeah, because cameo is like very um uh, uh not targeted. It's just like it's someone saying. And then it's just, it's just like The Rock making a voicemail. It could be more targeted, like someone who sings is singing. Like, that's fun. Or they're stripping because that's like what they're good at. Just, I love it. Yeah. Love yeah. You, you know who signed me up for Cameo? It was a few years ago. Uh, Andy Dick signed me up for Cameo. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Um, has it been around? How long has it been around? I think, I think pushing four or five years. Okay. I've, yeah, yeah. I've been on um, a few. So then I gotta, I gotta get in, I gotta get in bed with you, and and we gotta do a, a jokeogram. Oh, hey! And comedians say, that's, you know, add yeah. Brian's name and then make it a joke. That's yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh huh. Let's do it. Um, that's fun. So yeah, that's uh, all, yeah, all of the holding money part of it is becoming. That is that is the that is the the major problem. It's so funny the way because it's like we have more information than than most people about this kind of stuff. So it, mm -hmm. it's I mean, even you just knowing that, like, algorithmically, if you show a dick print, then on certain apps, that's going to uh, cause a red flag. That's so fun. This is like my favorite part about this industry is like how, getting like how, we, people are gathering so much information um, that no one would need to have. You know what I mean? Like. Like knowing like how much of a dick print you can put on Instagram and not get flagged is a hilarious thing to know. You know what I mean? <laughs> like who yeah, would have ever thought no, that anybody would have to know that? Or like, you know, you how much like of a that. joke or like, you know, I've seen in, 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 in like TikTok, people are uh, people will still talk about sex, but then they'll they'll write the caption S E uh, C C S. Have you seen this? No, it's S E C C S instead of S E X. Um, oh, 
Yeah, like all of these, we're like inventing new ways just to like miss the bullet, you know, just a matrix, you know. Um, yeah. Cause like on, on a lot of the videos, comedy wise, you can say a swear word as long as you don't write the swear word in the captions. If you write the swear word in the captions flagged, but if you say the swear word, no problem. You don't even have to bleep it as long as you don't write S H I T in the captions, write it in the captions pulled. So it's, it's more, it hurts people's feelings more if they read it. Maybe. I don't know. It. I don't know. What is the thing? Is that what we're worried about now is hurting people's feelings? Is that what we're worried about? Every time I get flagged, I assume it's somebody personally who flagged it and that like Instagram didn't have the time to find me. Someone just decided. And it's like, if you're my follower and you're just flagging my stuff, get out of my page. Let me live. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's just not fair. I, I don't get it. What's the industry right now? Do you think that there are people that think that they're competing with you? Um, do you feel like you're competing with people or do you think that we're at a place now with OnlyFans and all this stuff that you can just do your own lane and not upset anybody? Competing with other, other, um, other performers. Yeah. Do you think there's performers. people that like, cause in comedy, it's always like, Oh, so-and-so got such and such. That means I can't get it. And it's like, it's, it's a, it's a fake idea. Like there's enough money out here for everybody. Right. But do you feel like people are, yeah, well, the the good ones, the hungry ones, you know, compete. But then you can also be a good one where you just don't even look at who's in the other lane and you just go straight forward. But competition, I mean, in in general, I think can be can be good. Yeah, if it motivates you, you, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so I I I definitely look at other people, see what they're doing. That's just who I am because I I crunch numbers and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so it, it helps me, but then you also got to run on your own sometimes too. Yeah. So I guess what's, what would be your advice for somebody who started, um, and only fans as like, um, like they really didn't know what kind of work it would take. And they started it as sort of like a, um, like a, like a pet project and now they want to get serious about it. What would you have for advice on how to take, um, like 15 of the people that, that like are hitting on you or are, are on your only fans to like, um, a, a, a monetizable fan base. Yeah. What's, what would be your advice? I, I'm lucky because, you know, I was, I've been in the industry like 18, 19 years, so it just carried over. Yeah. It, it would have been so much harder if, if I would have got in only fans a few years ago without that, if somebody's starting on the ground floor, I would say if you have the body that's done yeah you know obviously keep it up um and you got a dick that works and a yeah. camera that works that's that's done don't worry about that it that's so what you need to do is once a month film some shit that you can release once a week so the other 99 percent of your time needs to be marketing so one percent play with your penis 99 percent market interesting and, yeah and some of the best way to market would be to find other people just how you know m movie stars marry or date to pull each other's fans or a country singer sings rap to get other fans yeah you got to collaborate and you'll immediately marketing get those people from the other the other performer you're you're filming with yeah i like that i like that a lot that seems like a, that seems like a lot of what i see especially on the only fans is is that cross promo to try to help and it works on me like if i'm on somebody's page um and they're offering you know the week trial for the other person i'm going to check that out i'm going to see what's going on on the other page um and that is that's the thing it is interesting that only fans is not offering um like you can't advertise on only fans right you have to if you want to do it you're doing it on your own you're finding ways creative ways a lot of people yeah, yeah. I talk to are doing the like like they'll do a TikTok or they'll do an Instagram to try to get to OnlyFans and they figured out all the places where which links they can put where to eventually get them to where they can monetize them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got to funnel them carefully, you know, using the the proper like TikTok, being careful with what you show. Yeah. But you can't put OnlyFans on TikTok. You have to send people to Instagram, right? And then then a link tree, right? And then yeah. OnlyFans, yeah. This is what someone told me. And then, um, I guess 
a lot of people, the, the interview I did last week, um, this woman was using dating sites as her marketing tool. And dating sites have now found that um, this is the thing that's happening. So if you put the word anything only fans or only friends in like Tinder, you get axed from Tinder forever. Oh. We're like real we're like really in this place where like we're all just getting ourselves canceled every step of the way. <laughs> Cause this girl was like, I have to get a new phone number if I want to get a Tinder now. Cause she got banned. Oh yeah, um, the phone itself is blocked or something. Yeah, yeah, the they number, your that. email. Like I tried to I tried to start a new Instagram page recently and and it took Instagram a week to realize it's the same guy. Because I'm using, I'm still on the same phone, and there's only so many ways I can connect with this thing, right? So then now this this I was trying to see if I made a fresh account without followers on it, if I could get stuff to skyrocket, right? Just just by chucking into the into the algo, um, and because because I was finding like either being shadow banned or finding that like uh, past uh, um, like like marks against me were making so that this account that had followers wasn't doing what made sense mathematically. So I was like, what if I just throw this one up and see what happens? And it was going fine. And then they were like, Oh, this is the same guy. And now they show up together and it's blocked again. It's like, they got us, they got us by the balls. So that's why you, that's why you got to push stripogram and, and, yeah. own it, and own it separate. Yeah. yeah. You need your own thing. Cause you know, we yeah. don't own any of these. So you got to have your own URL that the people can't take from you and you have a server a server in another country yeah <laughs> yeah now you have a garage full of you know like mining bitcoin and you're like how did i get here um the uh what was i gonna say to you so okay so this i, I can feel the pressure from you you said you said make sure your dick works make sure your body is you're taking you're taking these these things to make sure that your body is tip top um this feels particularly for you to be like one of the main and you can correct me if i'm wrong uh, one of the main like stressors is like like making sure that you're fit fit and like yeah. camera ready does this well a fit being fits part just part of me that's how i got yeah. into it in the first place because yeah. i did like amateur bodybuilding and um i got scouted when i was like 21 and yeah and your and body's crazy your genetics are crazy you look fantastic well, thank, I mean, a lot of, a lot of work that's sure. You of should course. see my, my supplement cabinet has like 200 plus supplements in it. Yeah. I go and to you bed have a lot of knowledge. Tonight. Yeah. 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 Um, but, uh, going, doing the, doing the porn, I just got out of a, a tour before I'd like film once a month. Yeah. But I just got done doing a tour in Dallas, Texas and LA. And I filmed like 13 videos and in, in about 11, 12 days. Yeah. A lot of Viagra. And I don't think it was so healthy because yeah. it lowers your blood pressure. And I'm doing that, you know, two times a day sometimes, doing 100 milligrams two times a day. And I actually was just checking my blood pressure a bit ago. Because just, to keep the, just to keep the scene, just to keep the scene the way it's supposed to be because there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm really, you know, I've, I've been really good at it. But with that many, like if I, if I kind of build up the limbido, the sexual drive for the month, I can get through it. I can yeah. hold on to a really good thought. I can stay hard, you know, the four or five hours. I was just a little concerned with doing one to two a day over a two week period. So and then was... nobody knows this um, ab about the dick, but the dick is connected so tightly to the brain that if you let even just like the little bit of doubt in there, then you're screwed. I used to have a buddy in college who was like convinced that he that he had a small penis, and we're all pretty sure he doesn't have a small penis. But he thought he was he had a small penis, therefore he has a small penis because his dick's never going to do what he needs it to do. Because in his head, he's always there, right? Um, the the dick is like the closest to the brain of any of the other parts of the body. It's incredible. <laughs> if you let any doubt in there, your dick is like I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave because you don't even believe in yourself. And I think women don't know that, uh, and I think some men. Also don't know that, but it really is the head game on having a good dick and having good and having good dick game is so important. It's like, you're like a professional athlete. Your head has to be in the game at all times. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. I mean, I, you find like in between um, positions, you'll see me over in the corner. It's just my eyes closed, just going. Mm. So you like think of a good thought. What's that good thought? What's that thought that'll carry you through the four hours? Not specifically, it, but like, yeah, it, it changes each time. Um, it might be just like, uh, my mind just gets really close up on, 
on a, a, a body part, usually between the legs, you know, that gap. Yeah. And I just, I'll just sit there and just, it's just engulf myself in it. Yeah. You know, and then um, I'll even kind of look at the person that I'm doing like blurry in a way. Yeah. To imagine them how I want them to be. So I can, I can stay in it. But if I touch a little too much hair, I might be like, whoop. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. That's, I have, I've had that, I've had that same experience in like, in like my relationships. It's a little, it's a little, it's just some hair and then it's, it's over a thought, anything. Yeah. That's so crazy. That's the side, that's the side that like, that's the side of this industry that, that I think is, is underrepresented because uh, women don't have to have that added pressure of keeping this this camera ready cock at all times. Um, and it is, it's a lot of pressure. And like, that's what sometimes that's like, uh, well, that's what boots people out of industry. Like how many, how many, like, um, how many like Dick, uh, what word, what word do I want? How many Dick mishaps would you have to have in your career to be out forever? Yeah. It, it gets talked about if people, if people don't perform well, you, there's so much time. Dick shame in the world already. Like on set, people are very, all the producers I've been around have been very respectful and, and because, because they're going to wait for money. Yeah, of sure. Course. Sure. They want it to go quicker because time is money, but they'll wait and be patient and they'll wait. And, you know, if an hour goes by and a guy can't come, then they'll figure out a way here. Uh, let's squirt this on the abs. It looks like come. Sure. Um, I mean, I've, I've, the reason why I'm in it is because I have that, that crazy concentration. I mean, there was one time I did a set um when it was condoms right yeah with, with randy blue and we would sw swatch out swip out s swatch out swip out swap out yeah, yeah. <laughs> swap out condoms in between like positions and stuff yeah. over a handful of hours but one time i was hard for the full four hours so i didn't even have to change the condom yeah but i'm i'm a, we had porn like on a it'd be all the the guys the gay for pay guys we'd wa walk over together and watch the porn on the big screen yeah and they go you ready yeah you ready okay let's let's go back and stick each other's dicks in our asses <laughs> i'm glad that you said gay for pay because i'm always i'm always nervous about throwing that phrase in there because this is a phrase that i don't know where it came from sec uh real sex or some of this other stuff it became like a uh, like a common phrase um for men who identify as straight, who are in who are in the 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 gay side of the industry, uh, gay for pay, I don't know. Can we can we um, can we break it down a little bit further? Like, who identifies as gay for pay? Why is that happening? And then, um, what what is the the pitfalls or allure of that whole thing? Well, sure. Let me let me preface this or take it back a bit by um, saying that you know I I didn't necessarily give myself that label. I think. It, it was made up and, and yes. everybody, everybody is on a Kinsey scale. They have a sure. certain level of, thank you for saying that. Of they're, they're not just gay. They're not just straight. Right. There is, there is something. And, you know, and I, and so I'm in that crowd. I do have a level, yeah. you know, I'm, a, but the, the gay for pay has got a bad, a bad rap. They, they kind of tend it to be people just trying to pull money from, from the gay crowd that, but that's, that's like, the only reason I'm alive is because of the the gay crowd and my fans. Yeah, of course. And I they've given so much to me and I respect them so much and I will stand anywhere with them and support them fully. Um but it has had a um a bad rap, a, a bad stigmatism that's with it and so I don't I don't use it much now, you know, I'm I'm just shooting shit with you. Yeah, of course. But yeah, I, I don't I don't and that's and that's why it. I want to break it down a little bit because it does. Yeah. It does have this thing. Cuz cuz there's two sides, you know, there's there's, there's like just the male side, being a man is always like we, there's an ego to us. So like, we just want everyone to be attracted to us, whatever our thing is. And we want people that aren't supposed to be attracted to us to be attracted to us. So like the allure of the gay for pay thing for a while was kind of sexy. Cause it was like, Oh, like this isn't even a person who's attracted, but they'll, for me, they will, you know, and there's something fun about that. Um, yeah. It was, it was a kind of, is a niche, a fetish in a way that, People like that idea of, of trying to get that the straight guy to do something with them. Yeah, yeah. it was. But I, I don't know what turned it. It's just a momentum of a, a group of people that threw it online and, you know, spread like wildfire. And now it's bad. 
Yeah. Just well, just because like we're in the, we are in this weird space because again, it's the same thing. It's like it's like progress is slow. So we're so close to like full acceptance, right? And so to get to full acceptance, it would have to be um fantastic that that two gay men are together and that and and are loving and can and can show that openly, right? Because uh, being gay for thousands of years was a thing that we had to hide and minimize and lie about, and it was dangerous, and it was you know. Um, so we're right on the cusp of those two things, and it's like so. On the one hand, it's like this fun fetish of like. Uh, I can fuck somebody I'm not supposed to fuck, which we love that. Not fu fucking somebody you're not supposed to fuck is like 80% of why people do what they do. Sex being <laughs> bad is why people do things, right? Um, but then we're so close to being like, what you want to do sexually is nothing to be ashamed of, and you should love it, and you should openly show it. And so those two things are going to fight for a while. Fucking somebody you're not supposed to fuck, and only fucking people that you're supposed to fuck are fighting. And we want both of them inside of ourselves. It's like a, it's a visceral thing, right? Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, that's definitely fair. Um, <laughs> they'll be fighting for a while. Yeah, because the naughtiness of sex is is a lot of the fun of it. Yeah, that's interesting because I just did a a scene on Sunday for Kink.com. Yeah. And um, you know, tight the person's all tied up. Yeah. Like, and and like that and um. It was it was a guy that was tied up and yeah i had to go in there like balls to the wall slapping whips and shit yeah. and you know screaming and um near near choking and slapping and things yeah. like that which so, um, it, so it's um it's like uh i don't want to say fake fake's not the right word it's um um it was a uh, um fake non-consensual scene i guess this is the best way i can say it out loud i don't can't figure out the words yeah, yeah, yeah. But they'll, you know, they'll play as ahead of time. Oh, have you done this before? You know, a, a little interview. Yeah. Um, and then afterwards, oh, did you like it? So it's, oh, it's wow. completely. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that was in there. That's important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Having yeah, him yeah. on camera being like, I, I agree. This is the thing I did. I am so happy. Good. Good that we did it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's That's my that first... threshold. That's that uh, threshold we're talking about. Yeah. So you, so you felt. You said you um, had to go in gung ho. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it was it was interesting for me because there was so much time in between um, the sexual positions with waiting for the riggers to tie up the yeah. up yeah, the other really model. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah. So it's like a five six hour shoot. So a lot of waiting, and I I probably would have liked it more if it was a female that was tied up. Sure, sure. <laughs> but we got through it. Um, I think it looked good. And yeah. um, we'll see. Interesting. I, think, uh, I didn't guy even look very, very scared. Yeah, I wonder because so because of because of uh, I'll blame the patriarchy and all and 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 sexual dynamics and um, dominance and submissiveness. There, I am familiar with the the female rape fantasy from another man. Do you find that there are similar scenes being created where it's a uh, it's a it's like a, a rape fantasy with two men. Well, this one that that we did, it was like it's kind of like a boyfriend. Yeah. The scenario was he posted photos on Instagram. I didn't want him to, and his ass is all mine. I see, and he's gonna be taught a lesson. I see. This is this is this is that sort was... of like playful um, uh, uh, punishment, and I just wonder um, if it's equal. I wonder if it's equal gendered to who wants to be choked and and be submissive I because i don't have that information um i guess you just buy him a, a really tight like button-up neck shirt and when you put it on you go <laughs> and you just how see does it make you like feel <laughs> that's fun. so mine is always that like that like if you don't know you just like put your your forearm near her throat and then if she pushes against it then that's your green light oh. um but I, I had this thing once where, because uh, because of the because of the podcast and because of the proximity to sex and sex positivity, uh, weird conversations will come up at my shows because I like to do a Q and A at the end because generally I there's like eight questions they'll ask and so I've already written jokes for what they're probably going to ask. But somehow somewhere a discussion was was um, sort of talking about scat play and it was like uh, and then the, we were like trying to like um, identify how to emotionally uh, uh, and intellectually have the discussion of whether or not um, 
and you and your partner wanted to poo on each other. And so there was like this thing about like a glass coffee table and like being underneath it and then you poo on it and how does it make you feel? Um, it's completely absurd and not real, but, uh, but these are fun. These are fun. These are fun conversations, but these, and these are conversations that people should be having more. How do we find you? How do we follow you? How do we pay for your porn? How do we support your, um, uh, um, what's it? Uh, Singagram? What did you call it? Singagram? Yeah. A single gram and triple gram. Yes. Uh, sing-o-gram.com okay. or strip-o-gram.com um those ones uh only fans is at reese rideout r-e-e-s-e-r-i-d-e-o-u-t and um working on a, a film right now um a horror film okay you can uh, you can find some of that and support that at nickdent.com and this is um adult and horror combined or just horror just horror okay yeah, uh, nice. futuristic slasher. Oh, very cool. If I'm already your fan and I want to, and I want, or I'm a fan now because of this podcast and I want to support you, what's the best way that I can support you where you're making the most amount of money and I, and you get it directly? Is it reach right out that club? I'd, uh, not accept in there yet. So r- right now it's just OnlyFans. It's OnlyFans. Would be the best way. Yeah. Uh, pay, let's get this guy paid. Yeah, and then if if you're into the straight stuff, that that OnlyFans is Reese Right Out Girls. Okay. So I got I got like three OnlyFans actually. What's the third one? That's my Nick Dent acting one. Okay. But that's that doesn't get too many too many people on that one. So what's on there? Uh, behind the scenes of uh you know like the film we just did, is is that? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Behind the scenes, I yeah that, and then the the girl one and the guy one. Great. And then when are you live again? Going in live? Yeah. In Portland. Yeah, actually supposed to tonight, but I got to go. My car has a little coolant leak. I got to go throw some stop leak in there. Hopefully make it up there tonight. And how often are you up at that club? What's the name of that club? It's called Darcells, Darcell XV. Yeah. And uh, Friday and Saturday, there's they have two shows. So Every week? Full. Yeah, every week, unless I'm Portland, out of town. Portland, Oregon. Yep. Yep. Go see this man, get this man paid, Get this, follow this man on all the things. Thank you for doing this. Uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to cut here. Uh, we, we have a new episode every Sunday. I apologize to the fans for the uh, the absence. Uh, I went through some uh, physical, um, medical stuff, and it's just been a rough time after the pandemic, so I'm glad we're back up and running. I'm glad that we had our guests here today. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, I appreciate everything. Every Sunday, we're going to drop a new episode. Follow us there. Check it out on YouTube. Check it out on iTunes. Uh, and then follow all the guests on OnlyFans. Thank you guys for listening. Please share this episode. If you enjoyed the episode, if you had a good time, give us a review. We've done a lot of things to change over the years, and some of those things were awful. So if you like what you're hearing, tell us that we're doing a good job. Send us an email. Do the things. Like it. Check us out on Instagram, Sexy People Pod, all the places. And uh, if you like the guests, uh, give us some good comments and uh, tell us who else we should have. Thank you so much for listening. We could not do any of this without you.